some great lended data to showcase today uh, it's the dragons of era i think if i pronounce that correctly anyway i could almost shoot this from my backyard if my neighbor would oblige and cut his tree down which i don't think he'll do that but i think if i shoot just above the sheds it kind of kind of comes up there maybe anyway um because the weather has been atrocious here he's been kind enough to send me some data uh, to practice and play with. So this is uh, SHO. As you can see, I've got the three data sets here. Hydrogen, look at the hydrogen. That's nuts, right? Um, let's see what he did here. Um, I got it here on the phone. He did, uh, he used a William Optics uh, Four Star 91 and the 2600 mm Pro, go 26 mm. Woo! Uh, the Antelia filters, 4.5 nanometer narrowband. Very good, very good, very good choice. Skywatcher. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. You just can't. Uh, got one for sale, by the way. Anybody's interested, message me. Uh, and then this is just six and a half hours of data. Yeah. Uh, shooting 300 second subs. So five minutes. Yeah. I mean... Pretty, pretty good signal to noise ratio here for just six and a half hours total. I'm blown away. And look at the little egg down here. Yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do a couple things too today that are a little different. You know, I'm big on the Orton effect. And I actually went over to Polyman Astro's uh, YouTube channel yesterday to download his 4X utility palette because I've upgraded to the brand new Pixin site. And of course you have to reinstall gobs of stuff. So I, I really love what the 4X utility palette does with the stars. So when I went to go get his uh, repository link, I noticed he has a script built into Pixin site now. Um, let's see, script, utilities, Look at that, Orton, Orton Glow. He's got a script. After watching one of my videos, he, he built a script. That's pretty cool. Uh, and I can say after using it and then rolling over to Photoshop, results are, are really good. They're really comparable. So we're going to do both and let you guys decide what you like better. But I would highly recommend going to his channel, downloading the script if you want to stay in Pixinsight and you don't have Photoshop. So enough about that. Let's get into processing uh, SHO color palette. Dragons of Era. Yeah. Uh, so first off, we have a tiny little bit of stacking artifact. Artifactness. <laughs> um, yeah, so we need to get rid of that. And I'm going to come over here to my dynamic crop. I'm going to do these individually. We're going to do some batch conversion to kind of speed up time. Um, kind of like that. The stack really isn't that bad. It's just this oxygen is just a little off. So let's drag that uh, crop, those crop parameters off. Close the tool down. We're just going to hit each one. And believe it or not, this uh this data here i have these long pauses i have to go through and edit out because that's just how i talk this data here looks like it's had dynamic background extraction run on it um but i don't think it has i think this is straight out of stacking yeah so let's shorten these names up That's our O3. And then, um, what am I doing here? This is the HA. It's gonna be cool. And the S2. So with each one of these images, um, I wanna do a 
correction first. This is nonlinear. So if you could zoom in here, he's got really good stars, but they could use a little correcting. Um, and then I want to pull the stars and then I want to do a little bit of noise reduction. So yeah, but I'm going to do this in a batch conversion instead of boring you by doing all that individually. I'm just going to bore you a little bit. So let's go over here. Let's hit file. We're going to hit save as. So these are the three files that he sent me. And so now we want to do is create a folder. Um, I'm just going to name it INT for integration. And this is going to be the S2. So I got to send all these to a folder. Click OK, because we're going to keep them in the XISF format. Now that we've cropped them. Save as. H-A. Yep. And then the O-3. Well, save as. Oh, one, two, three. I, I, I. I. <clears throat> cool. So we're going to move these down here actually not going to use them again believe it or not um, so we want to go to our folder here and we're also going to create a folder called batch this is where all of our pre-processed files are going to land all right so first thing I want to do is right click on the desktop I'm going to say image container, open that up. So I want to go grab those files. So this little uh, icon here, the folder plus add files. I want to grab the files that we cropped and shorten the names of. Okay. And what we're going to say is the output directory is going to be this batch folder after they've been processed. Okay. And I'm going to drag this instance out. So this is our image container. So this little icon here, whoa, <laughs> look at that. I messed that up before and somebody got all over me. This little icon here contains our three files that were cropped. Okay. Uh, so now we want to do a process container. So we're going to go process, all processes, a lot of S's, S -S -S, and process container. So what are my three initial steps? They really haven't changed very much. I want to do a correction in Blur Exterminator. So I'm gonna drag that instance over, that's step one. Step two is I wanna pull the stars, but I wanna make sure I generate a star image, right? Because I'm gonna combine them later. That's step two. And lastly, I'm gonna apply a little noise reduction, just a, just a tiny little bit, 50%. All right, so I'm going to correct the stars of each image. I'm going to pull the stars of each image, and then I'm going to do noise reduction on each image. And so then in the batch container or batch folder in that that we created, we'll have three new images. So let's drag that instance off. Let's put it right here, not behind me. And then it's real simple. Just drag and drop, and you sit back. <gasps> Hallelujah. It's over with. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I forgot his, uh, his files are pretty large. So that took, that took about 600 scrolls. And if you stare at your phone constantly while you're not doing anything like I do, you know what that means. All right. So there's our stars. So let's go here and say file open. Uh, we're going to go to the uh, batch folder that we made. Highlight these three images. I want them up. Watch out! Oh man, those things look good. All right. Um, yeah. 
So I think I'm going to go old school with this. This data. I'm not going to pre-stretch it. Sometimes I'm a fan of pre-stretching. Sometimes I'm not. Um, I'm going to go here to I'm gonna open up LRGB combination. I'm going to put them in the traditional SHO configuration. Uh, SHO. Apply global. Okay. So I'm going to open up my STF on here. Uh, the channels are linked. So let's do a stretch and see how god awful it looks. It's probably going to be super green. Which it is. Let's unlink the channels. Hit it again. It's a good starting point. I mean, honestly. Um, let's expand this out. Just a skosh. Let's just zoom in on here on our green. Let's bring the green down just a little bit. Let's clip that green. Boom. Pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna open up our histogram transformation. We're gonna grab that stretch data. That's just for the color, by the way. And we're gonna place it on the bottom bar here. Hit F12 to kill the auto stretch and then drag and drop. Yeah, baby. Okay. We still got some green tones in there. But we got some really good color. Now, mind you, this is just our color data. Got a little green in here. We could probably kill some of this green off. Or we can come in here to uh, script, utilities, um, color mask. Let's see what kind of a. I know, right? I am going old school today. See what kind of green is left in the image here with a green color mask. Yeah, it's not bad. Let's uh let's open up convolution. Let's blur this mask a little bit. Cool. And apply the mask. Right click on the image, say mask, and click show mask. Still there. Uh, now we're going to open up our curves. Do a real time preview. I'm going to bring the green down. Push the red up. Yeah, see what we're getting on there? And we're going to bring this blue down. Probably hard to see. But it didn't make a difference. But I don't think I'm going to mess with it anymore. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good color data. Cool. Let's take the mask off. Say mask and remove mask. Um, let's open up um, GHS. I like GHS for some. What am I trying to say? What do I like it for? Oh, uh, saturation. I think saturation. Right about there. So that's our image. I dig it. Um, let's rename it. We're just going to say RGB because it's our color data. I'm push that down there. Let's open up our hydrogen that we have here. And let's do a stretch on it. We're going to apply this as a luminance layer. So let's uh, kill the stretch. We're going to open up GHS, do a real time preview. 
And first thing I want to do is I want to check the black point. So I'm going to hit this little plus button that's going to zoom in on the black point. Um, and that's not bad. I think we can, sometimes if you click that button, you see your histogram like way over here. I'll show you what you can do. Um, we're going to find a spot just behind the histogram there. We're going to click that. We're going to take this transformation type and turn it into linear. See it says send to BP, black point. So we do that, pushes it back. And then we accept it. So let's reset the tool. And then we're going to take our zoom feature here for our histogram and then drop it back to one. So let's stretch this. Man, oh man. We can keep going. Can we keep going? Yeah, I think we can. Let's grab this little faint data out here. We're going to select it, hit send to SP, and then we can take our local intensity. I think we kind of went too much a little bit. Yeah, maybe we did. Let's reset it. I think we probably hit it too much there. Right about there. And bring it down just a bit. This egg gets blown out here. See where it's. values okay <clears throat> cool I think what we can do is maybe select some of these highlights here send to SP we're just gonna pop them up here and you see how our shadows got real dark can say protect shadows by I always think an understretched image looks better than an overstretched image so let's zoom in here I think we're good I don't think we've blown out anything let's open up our um, curves select our RGBK since it's a grayscale image, we're just going to run over the image here. So we've got nothing pushing up in the peaks here. So we can maybe pin the black point. Maybe lift this point subtly. Accept it. All right. Okay, so I like it. Um, so that's our hydrogen stretch. Let's open up our colored image here. And we are going to open up convolution. We're gonna blur it big time. Got some really cool colors. Maybe a little too much magenta. Let's see if we can correct that. Even though it's blurred, got quite a bit of magenta in here. Let's go in here since they uh, they got rid of that little tool. So we got to go to image, uh, invert. Yeah, there's some green. See the green in here. Let's open up um, a CNR. Drag and drop. You see this kind of green haze that's off in here. It's going to get rid of that. Cool. And we're going to go here back here to image and we're going to invert it back. I don't know why they got rid of that magenta star. Yeah, they got rid of that some of that magenta. All right, so now we want to place the luminance on there. So LRGB combination is the tool. We're going to take that hydrogen, click it up here. We're going to turn our red, green, and blue off. I really want to do some chrominance noise reduction. I'm going to boost the saturation on it and then dump it. Very cool. Okay, we got a great looking image. Um, I think we can enhance some of the structure in here. 
Now, if you notice, it's pretty flat, and that's what the Orton effect does, is it, it kind of boosts, it puts some glow back in these images uh, that you lose when you dump that luminance on. Um, still got a little tinge of green in here, which I don't mind. I like that. Cool with that. Cool with that. Let's put the stars back in. Ready? Uh, so let's rename this Starless. That's very important. You have to rename the image that you're putting your stars into Starless. Um, these are our stars. So let's open up LRGB combination. Oh, wait. 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 Let's not do that. What am I doing? It's going to hurt a script. Utilities. A 4X utility palette. Yes, if you don't have this from Polyman Astro, get it. It's amazing. Uh, okay, so we do have three channels. Uh, I wish I didn't have to put this data in here. I wish I could just combine the stars. They're Poly, Polyman, Apollo, Apollo, Apollo Creed, please. Anyway, maybe not. Uh, okay, so. We are going to put in, what are we going to put in? Uh, we're just going to put in our big data here. So S2, it's going to look weird too because only one image is stretched. It doesn't matter. You have to put something on here. H A. And then O3, but this is the important part, the stars. S2 stars. H A stars. And go through stars, star, star, stars. Execute. Whoa. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool, actually. That is definitely a hydrogen image. It's kind of creepy looking. It's kind of Stranger Things. Got a Stranger Things vibe going on. Okay, so let's stretch our stars. Let's open up GHS yet again. We're just going to do real time preview. I'm looking for like a 0.3 uh, or a 3 point to 4 point somewhere in there. What I'm looking for is these really small background stars that just barely start showing up okay uh, and I'm gonna accept that cool so let's close the tool down and we have to rename the star image stars it's very important I want to do one little trick here that I work on sometimes. I'm going to open up my starless image here. Um, I'm going to open up ACDNR. And I'm going to do a lightness mask. So I'm going to put preview and real time preview. What I want to do is I want to create a real faint mask. And, and this core principle area that we want to focus on, I want to really mitigate those pesky little smaller stars that can really kind of clutter your image up and obscure some of this really cool detail. Um, I want to mute those out. And the best way to do it for me that I've found is in PixInsight here to create a luminance mask. And not a really dark luminance mask because I mean that would almost just wipe out all your stars. Just subtle, like that. So let's close down the real time preview. We're gonna drag over our copy. Man, that's a cool image. Uh, I drag and drop. So there's our our lightweight luminance mask. And when we just apply it, we don't have to invert it. It's gonna mask out. 
let's show the mask. Let's just gonna mask just the highlights where we don't really want to clutter this image with stars. Okay. So mask. Let's go back here to show mask. So we're gonna have this little star screen uh, that I copied here. This little formula from the Blur or Star Exterminator database. And we're just gonna drop it on. And that's why you've got to have your image starless and your stars stars because it's pulling those names so you can see like all our stars are back in here but see they really kind of muted out in here which looks a little weird because you're like hey where the stars go it doesn't look natural but we're going to work on that we're going to take that mask off close down the tool we're going to open our star image back up we're going to stretch it again if any of you uh, script creators out there are watching this this would be a really cool script it's like a very um step-by-step -step process um, but lots of little steps here so let's stretch it again what we're looking for is is really boosting our bigger stars right about there and this image has a lot of color in it so our stars can get muted so let's add some saturation a little bit <laughs> all right close the tool close the image now we need to create a range mask because we just want our brighter stars so range selection real-time preview slide over the lower limit really focusing on like these bigger stars here so let's smooth it out so you know we're going to gain back some of these stars in here we're definitely going to enhance and mask out uh, some of these groupings of stars and some of the brighter stars let's accept that uh, close down the star image open our starless image back up and then put the mask on so those bigger star stretch stars they're they're just gonna plop in here right let's open that equation up again drag and drop so you're like what did it do so you can see let me zoom in here uh there's before see the bigger stars are muted after now they're back in some of these images it's really noticeable because the stars are so big and it really gives the image some really good depth okay um so let's run some blur extermination on this thing now now that it's non-linear i'm gonna do a little preview box here See some of those little pesky little e stars that really, like you do all this work and then you put your stars back in and you're like, where'd my nebula go? Um, it, this process really uh, mitigates that. So let's open up Blur Exterminator here. <laughs> Reset the tool. I don't think I want to sharpen them that much. I do want to increase some of the star halo. I'm going to leave that non-stellar at 50%. Let's drag and drop and see what it looks like. Man, this is just the preview. Should have reduced the file size or the image size. All right, Control Shift and Z. Yeah, we're definitely, look at that. Ooh. I mean. All right. So I'm going to dump this on the entire image. It's going to take a while for me. But I'll be back in a flash. Don't go anywhere. Okay.
Oh, that took a while. Um, okay, close down the tool. Let's go back in here to the preview. Let's see what noise reduction does to this. Um, we're going to do a full blast noise reduction. We're going to bump up our details a little bit just to protect them. That goes a lot quicker. Let's zoom in here. Oh. I think if I was processing this for myself, yeah, I can definitely, you probably can't see it, but I can see it. Um, can we see it out here in the darkness? Yeah, probably seeing. Drag and drop. Groovy. All right. Now. Yeah, I like it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy. We're going to call this one uh, PIX underscore Orton. Okay. And we're just going to minimize that. Push them over here. We're going to rename this one Photoshop underscore Orton. Okay. And I'm going to save this one file. Save as. Uh, we're going to save it as a TIFF. And we're going to call it PS underscore Orton. Right here. Save. Yes. 16 bit. And OK. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through kind of like a step by step in Photoshop and then you'll, sh you'll be able to compare the little individual steps that I take to what uh, Paul has done in his script that's kind of more automatic. So I think that's the best way to show you. So let's open up Photoshop. Ooh, I was practicing. Let's close that one out. The old fish head. Uh, uh, photography. Helping others, Peter Carpenter. And here's the PS Orton. Okay. So let's make a copy of that. And man, you know, so I'm itching right now because there's other things that I do in Photoshop, like some, what am I trying to say? Like some uh, camera raw filter, I do some of that kind of work. Um, but to make a true comparison, I'm going to refrain and I'm just going to apply the Orton effect. All right. So I've made a copy. Okay. I'm going to come up here to filter, uh, blur, and we're going to go Gaussian blur. So again, this is, uh, the blurring effect, which I'll show you in his script, how that works. I like, I like it a little heavier. I can still see the structure. I mean, if I went up like this, that's way too much, right? And down here, there's not much at all. So what I want to do is I want to blur it to a point where I still see kind of the structure, but you know, I've blurred everything out. Cool. So this one is about 20%. He has different blending modes that you can choose from. I'm still going to choose screen. And then I want to go to image and down here to apply image. And all this stuff is pretty well set. Blending mode and multiplicity. And uh, you want your layers to merge. So that's the Orton effect. And now his script has an opacity adjustment. I'm going to bring that all the way back down up to about 40 percent so what it's doing is it's just giving you some glow some highlight back in here um, i don't think there's a ton of structural loss it appears that way but the method that i use here in photoshop i don't think you lose a lot of structure 
think it's just the glow that it gives it appears that you're you're kind of blurring out your details. If you wanted to, you could come back in here and erase, use the eraser tool to erase some of the glow away. You know, if you wanted to grab your eraser tool, I have mine set to 70% and just, you know, kind of grab some of those structures. You can see I actually kind of probably got too much if you wanted to be real selective about that. But this is not today's comparison. So we're gonna merge that down. I'm gonna say file. And we're gonna save it. Close it down. So let's go file open. And let's grab our Photoshop Orton. <laughs> So, so this is non orc effect. Let's zoom in here like this. And let's, like I said, it just puts some glow back in. It puts a little softness back into your image. It doesn't look so harsh. To me, it, it it really gives you basically a luminance enhancement without a whole bunch of manipulation. Um, it's kind of what it does. So let's push this one down. This is our Orton in Photoshop. And then let's open up the pics. Here we're going to go to script utilities. And like I said, you can find his, uh, his repository link on his video. Okay, so how it starts out, this is weird because it does default to the Pix Orton. Um, but he tells you right here in these parentheses that even though it defaults, you see all these values are all grayed out here. You still have to choose it. Uh, like I said, it's a it's a work in progress. And the little spinning wheel tells you that it's doing something. So it takes just a bit to kind of get itself set up. But once you start seeing these values in bold, it's a big image, so it's going to take just a bit. But once you start seeing these values in bold, you can start manipulating them. My nose. It just, I just picked my nose. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, so, remember this is the convolution slider. So this is how blurry we're going to get our image here. So the first thing you got to do is create a duplicate for the glow. So let's just do that. There is no live preview right now. But you can kind of see there it is in the background you know that's the blur and that's about what I had before All right um, I want to choose the screen method on this one and there's the opacity so I think I was at about 40% 43% on the other one so then you just simply hit apply Orton effect And it's done. So we're gonna close down the tool. We can get rid of this, uh, copy this image. Yes, we don't want any more. So there it is. So let's move this one over here. Let's open up the Photoshop one. All right. Um, crap. I don't want a big enough monitor. Um, okay. Let's drag and drop so we're looking at the same thing. Uh, wow. I can't really tell a lot of difference. I think he definitely has more glow in his than I probably do in the Photoshop one. Uh, 
let's zoom in here. Let's see. You know, maybe just a little more glow to it than this one. But all in all, I think if you're only a Photoshop person and you like that effect, um, and you, or excuse me, if you're only a Pixinsight person and you like the effect, this is a great start. This is awesome. Um, I think it does have a little more softness. I could have probably brought some of those values down. One thing that I kind of realized with the Pixinsight script version, if I come in here to script, utilities and I do dark structure enhance push it down to kind of the high 20s and run it on Paul's script version it does help some of those details all right so let's look and see here it's uh go before Man, these files are so big. Yeah, see what I mean? I mean, you still have the glow, but it definitely brings back in some of that darker area. Um, I'm completely happy with that. I can't argue with that at all. Great job. So that's it. That is me processing some New Zealand picks in sight. Dragons of Ara, Era. I want to say Era. I think that sounds better. Um, really isn't oversaturated. I didn't really get crazy with the colors. And yeah. If you want to get some of that glow out of the background that you get with this one, you can open up curves and just go in here to the luminance and maybe just drop it down a touch. Somewhere in there. Look at me. I'm always adjusting. A little boost, a little saturation boost. <laughs> Groovy. All right, that's it. So I can definitely say that he is on the right path to stay, keep you in pixel sight. There's a couple more things in Photoshop I like to do. Probably still to this day, we'll never get rid of Photoshop. I just still like the organic ability to manipulate some of these colors and data, especially if I've got some funky stacking color issues that I just can't seem to get I don't know, pinpoint and focus with Pix and Sight. It's really easy to do that in Photoshop. So that's just my opinion. Anyway, the little egg. Let's see what this egg looks like. Oh, that egg's crazy. That's that's an image in itself. High resolution, high focal length image. All right, cool. Well, I appreciate you watching and stay tuned for my next video because I've done one image this month and it is the Iris Nebula. But believe it or not, here in my Boral Seven Skies, I was able to capture some really crazy luminous detail. The little ghost thing at the bottom. And uh, it was definitely, I think, uh, made possible by the El Quad Enhance by Optalon uh, that I have threaded on the front of my focal reducer. Anyway, I'll be doing a processing video on that next. So stay tuned. And as always, clear skies and clear minds. See ya.